Apex Legends has a lot of issues. And when I say a lot of issues, there's a lot of issues. In fact, the game is in such a bad state right now that there's a whole movement going on with no Apex August, where players are planning to go on a strike and not play Apex for all of August. Now, whether that'll actually be a successful strike with season 14 around the corner is up to debate, but I figured I would take a look at all of the issues playing in the game to see where all the hate is coming from. For the sake of clarity, this list will focus on problems that are currently affecting the game negatively. If these problems are left unchecked by EA or Respawn, it might end up killing the whole game. This video in a way comes out of love and not hate. I'll try to keep it as objective as possible to highlight what's stopping the game from being a functioning product without bringing up personal opinions for what you know I'd want to change. We are looking at about 40 issues right now and I actually had to slim this down a lot but I have covered a lot of these topics in different videos. You can always check out the channel if you want to hear more about them. As usual, I went through as much content as I could sat back and pondered and of course asked you guys in the community what's currently plaguing the game so that we can actually cover everything in this video. If I missed anything, please make sure to let me know in the comments and of course make sure to like this video so it spreads the message and reaches more people and hopefully developers themselves. Let's start off with matchmaking, specifically the pubs matchmaking. This has been flawed and all over the place for the entire duration of the game, but has been getting increasingly worse with the changes to ranked, forcing sweats out of ranked lobbies and into the casual public lobbies, and they bring the predator friends with them. The flaws of matchmaking is even more obvious if you're playing solo, as both of your teammates are usually way lower level than you are, meanwhile you're getting queued against entire predator full stacks who abuse that to run through the lobbies with ease. It's also been proven time and time again that there's some hidden matchmaking in the game, meaning that most matches are rigged. EA published a paper on engagement optimized matchmaking several years ago, which outlines that players are more likely to continue playing if there are losses in between every game. Anyone who's played Apex for over a few games can tell when the game is stacked against you, when you get bad teammates against lobbies filled with masters and predator stacks, and sometimes when you do well, the game just literally doesn't give you a team and forces you to no fill just to, I guess, keep your win rate down. Respawn has gone on record and said that they explicitly don't have the predatory engagement optimized matchmaking in the game but that doesn't mean that there isn't some form of predatory matchmaking in play the matchmaking carries over to ranked as well. We've seen several iterations of ranked in the last few months as Respawn has tried to fix ranked and make it less of a mess, but they'll never make everyone happy as long as the matchmaking prioritizes queue time over match quality and competitive integrity. It seems as if the matchmaker takes a few minutes, then throws caution to the wind before filling predator lobbies with gold and platinum players to keep the queue times low. It's a bit of a lose-lose situation for Respawn since everyone says that they want high quality matches with a long queue time, myself included, but every time there's the long queue time at the start of a season, streamers start whining for respawn to fix the matchmaking and all of a sudden the queue time is fixed at the cost of ranked integrity. This is also a negative feedback loop since bad matchmaking leads to fewer lower end players queuing up for ranked with the lack of players forcing the matchmaking to pull lower and lower players just so they can fill out the lobbies in time. None of the changes to ranked have ever addressed matchmaking and until they do, it will continue to be worthless. I think that even at the cost of queue times, high ranked players will just have to bite the bullet, especially when it comes to the start of the season. If you're grinding ranked for 48 hours straight, don't be surprised when there's nobody to put in your lobbies. If I'd make a suggestion, it would be to either revert to the old system where you would get put into higher lobbies once you hit a certain rank. For example, you wouldn't get queued against masters and predators until you hit diamond. Either bring the system back or maybe try to divide it by each tier. The amazing EOMM brings us the bot lobby glitch, which continues to come back in different ways and forms, because why wouldn't it? There's clearly a matchmaking system to keep you hooked, and it can be cheated by pretending that you are way worse of a player than you actually are. At one point, you could force level 1, or bot lobbies, by just throwing yourself off of the map several times in a row. Lag can be defined in many ways, but in this case we're talking about frame rate issues, typically because of bad rigs or poor optimization. As many of you know, I'm playing on a $5,000 rig and I can't even hold a stable 240 frames per second in the dropship with all the settings on low. My old PC used to bounce between 80 to 140 frames per second and it was impossible to stay consistent with fluctuating frame rates. And even on last gen consoles like PlayStation 4, the frame rates dropped down as low as 40 FPS. I'm sure many players can agree that compared to most other AAA titles, Apex Legends is not well optimized for performance. 
with client side lag, you would imagine there has to be crashes. We've seen many types of crashes in this iteration of the game, with many seeming to be server sided, but there's definitely a lot of client side ones as well. I've had the game close out and crash when taking team fights, rotating, and even that one time I just used a crafter. In the most recent event, Apex Legends Global Series World Championship, there were countless of crashes that cost professional teams potential hundreds of thousands of dollars. This one is a little bit subjective, but I'll bring it up either way because it is a complaint that I've seen a lot. The skins are very often bland and uninspired, which I guess would be fine if it weren't for the fact that they cost upwards of $20 each. This skin on the left was available for free in the season free battle pass, and on the right is a $10 recolor of it. For some perspective, here's a $20 skin from League of Legends. It's just not comparable, especially when you keep in mind that a skin in League is visible all the time for you and your teammates and opponents, instead of only being visible for for your own teammates and your enemies. I know it's a bit of a beat horse at this point, but it goes hand in hand with the skins. While a lot of skins aren't worth their price, some skins or heirloom are super rare to get. The game has crossplay, meaning that you can play from any console or PC if you would like and get into the same lobbies. But despite being able to play in the same servers, your progression, as in your level, your skins and your rank, is limited to the specific platform that you are playing on. If you want to play on another platform, you have to purchase everything back again. Back in late 2021, Respawn promised cross progression by 2022, and while the year isn't over yet, I don't think anyone expected it to be in the second half of the year, and so far we have seen no signs of it coming out, with everything hinting to a very late 2022 release, if at all. The Kraber is in a weird spot right now. After garnering a lot of attention, it received a nerf to its one-shot kill potential as a weird compromise between the public players wanting to keep the Kraber in the game and pros wanting it removed, and now nobody's happy. Since you can still one-shot kill if you headshot an enemy, as long as they don't have a high enough level armor or helmet, which makes it feel completely random if you're the one holding the Kraber. Yeah, this would need to come up eventually. Cheating has been a huge problem with Apex, especially at the highest levels of pubs or ranked ever since the game came out. We've had waves of hardcore aimbots with respawn completely powerless in combating them, and you can currently rent the hack from 5 bucks to 20 bucks a day to completely destroy the lobbies for a pretty long time before you actually get banned, since the anti-cheat does a poor job of automatically detecting cheats, even if someone hits only headshots. It's bound to happen in a game like Apex since we're running on a 20-year-old engine, with cheats running rampant in any other source games, making porting very easy, but that doesn't excuse just how bad the cheater problem is. Respawn has committed to deal with the cheater problem by putting staff solely with the responsibility of banning cheaters, but they're still not able to deal with the increasing amount of hackers that pop up every single day. Apex generally has very slow updates and some issues can take days, weeks, or even months to get fixed. While it can cut respawn some slack on not spending resources on more minor, insignificant issues, especially with all of these other issues currently ruining the game, they have struggled with dealing with pressing events in the past. Some notable events being the Rampage and Sentinel glitches, where users figured out exploits to either instantly charge them or make them keep their charge forever. This took overall weeks to fix, all while players were exploiting this glitch for easy wins. Eventually, the guns were taken out of the game to stop the exploiting from happening to roll out only to have users find yet another infinite charge exploit. Another more pressing one would have to be Respawn taking the game out for almost an entire week with the Season 9 launch. The game was eventually fixed, but there were still server issues for a good week afterwards. I recently mentioned a crafting glitch completely taking you out of the game, you know, in a form of a crash, but there's currently another crafting glitch going around that seemingly randomly stops you from using your abilities or healing. The only way to fix this is to either get down and revived or to enter the crafter again, but sometimes you don't notice that you have it until you are way away from the replicator. This odd client side bug has lost me so much RP that I've lost count. Players join the lobby and might notice that they're flying a little bit slower than anyone else with a hint of a stutter to their skydive animation. Once they land, they notice that they're rubber banding super hard, meaning that they try walking but just keep teleporting back and any action such as picking up an item, opening a door or shooting a player has a 9 out of 10 chance of no rigging. The only way to fix this is to alt F4 and rejoin, but if you take too long to connect or you happen to be contesting another team on drop, chances are you have already lost the game before you make your way back in. Apparently next-gen Xbox players had issues for a long time where their controllers would have this crazy input lag, meaning that any action on your controller would be significantly delayed in-game. By the time this video is being posted, this has been fixed, but it's still worth including since this took a long time to get fixed and was another reason as to why the Apex community is calling for a strike. 
Lobo's technical just keeps on breaking. We've seen it on almost every map in the game at this point, and it is a recurring bug that keeps showing up on both old and new maps, usually taking weeks to get fixed. This Lova tactical bug comes back in different ways, with one iteration thinking that you threw the bracelet out of bounds, making you do a finger wiggle animation, returning the bracelet to you, and putting it on cooldown. The most recent one, however, just has you throwing your bracelet out to have it sent back to you instantly. Because it seems to fail 9 out of 10 times, some players have taken the creative angle and juked out entire teams by sending the Loba tactical away, only to have it return with the other team expecting her to be going a different direction. This bug was fixed recently, but again, it was worth mentioning, especially since it's come back so many times before and was a huge reason for the strike. Norex have been happening a lot in Apex's history and is a byproduct of bad client or a bad server or maybe a bad client to server optimization or lag compensation, but they've been really bad in season 13.1 with players sinking whole magazines into an enemy to have the entire mag make damage sounds and look like the shots are hitting, but without actually dealing any damage. This seems to happen both when you tab out and tab back into the game, but also seems to be random. There's also reports of Rafe's tactical no regging, making entire magazines suck into her disappear after she comes out of the void. There's been a few instances of Apex advertising incorrect prices on their skins, especially when it comes to bundles, with the most notable one being in the 2021 New Year sale. We are specifically talking about the Silverback bundle, originally released for a 2.5k Apex coins prize to fund the ALGS championship, as were all the other skins that were released for these fundraising purposes. But despite this, the Silverback bundle was available for 2,150 Apex coins, at the same time claiming that it was reduced from 3,300 Apex coins coins, despite never ever being listed at that price. We're coming back around with another ranked issue. This one has been around for some time now, but it's still relevant. Sao Paulo is one of the least populated servers in the game, and as such doesn't have that much of a ranked population. Ranked grinders figured this out and started solely queuing into Sao Paulo servers, even if they were from United States or even Europe, so they could abuse the matchmaking, get longer queues, and end up against incredibly low level players to stomp ranked for easy RP and climb deeper and higher into Predator without any challenge other than the occasional other Sao Paulo. Paulo Predator. There have been many glitches that could crash a server, a lot of them including the geysers, but we will be looking into a more recent one that crashes everyone's clients instead. This recent hack was found by G-Dolphin, with Bangalore somehow spamming ultimates to crash everyone's clients, then allowing the Bangalore and their team to walk around and kill players as they are outside of the game or loading back in. I mentioned that many players were crashing in the ALGS LAN lobbies, but there were a lot more issues during that event. Without going too in-depth, there were many instances of odd bugs, computers and monitors crashing. Don't shoot him, don't shoot him bro, he crashed. Don't shoot him, do not shoot him. As well as there being no accommodations for players to play if they tested positively for a particular pandemic virus. Now, EA did provide travel and lodging till they were healthy again should they get sick, but many argue that there should have been ways to play either from their hotel room or some type of booths. This lack of forethought left over 30 players unable to compete in the biggest event of the year and has left a lot of players and fans with a sour taste in their mouth. This very rare bug impacted one of the teams who were forced to play in said tournament as a duo, randomly teleporting them to the center of the map, only to die in the zone. Oh man. This one hurts a lot for me personally because I came from playing Overwatch, a game with audio design so good that you could close your eyes and still know everything that was going on with 12 players fighting and using several abilities at the same time. In Apex, there are plenty of instances of entire teams running up with zero audio cues, using abilities such as zip lines or jump pads without alerting their targets, and getting players killed without any chance to fight back. It seems completely random as to whether you'll hear an enemy or not, and at a rate of inconsistency consistency so high that you don't know whether you should trust the audio cues or not. It's a pretty big deal since you're only using your sense of hearing and vision to play video games and this bug basically takes one of those senses away when you need it the most. The game for whatever reason plays your own teammates footsteps way louder than your enemies, confusing you and wondering why it works in the first place. There has been a few recorded instances of players who finished ranked in Predator suddenly losing record of them having been in Predator that season, despite showing their RP being way higher than the Predator cutoff. Meaning that they don't get the Predator badge, the animated Predator badge, or the limited dive trail. Which honestly isn't even worth grinding for, but that's kind of a whole different point. 
Valkyrie has been playing in the game for a while now with her overloaded kit allowing her to do everything at once on top of being a get out of jail for free card for the entire team if they make a bad rotation. She had a near 100% pick rate in the most recent Apex Legends LAN and it's very rare to see a high level ranked team without her. Valkyrie can easily play late and rotate into zone even if an enemy team made a conscious effort to gatekeep and hold them out of the ring and it's a huge crutch that continues to ruin the pace of the game. On top of that we've had a scan meta for a while now with legends such as Bloodhound, Seer, Caustic and Mad Maggie making it impossible to play without constantly being seen through walls. You're forced to run either Seer or Bloodhound with Seer making a comeback because of his use in competitive Apex. Seer means that you're going to get scanned with your heal cancelled, unable to move without getting focused by an entire team, with zero chance of counterplay and it just doesn't feel good. It's not fun. I'm planning to cover this in a full video, but Respawn is in a bad spot regarding game balance. They have to continue coming out with new and interesting legends, and do so by making them incredibly strong. This means that new releases have an ever-increasing power level, leaving old legends in the dirt. For example, let's compare Pathfinder, who kinda only has one passive, one tactical and ultimate, with Valkyrie, who has four passives, a tactical that serves several purposes, and an ultimate that rotates, scans enemies, and is just overall meta-breaking. We're still waiting for the 120 FPS support for next-gen consoles, and at this rate, there's going to be a lot of waiting. I'm thinking that Respawn will have to optimize the game first. I know that Respawn considers us freeloaders, and I am happy that they increase the level cap from level 100 to 500, because for those who aren't aware, you stop getting regular loot boxes once you hit the level cap, meaning that you'll have to start shelling out money for new cosmetics once you've hit a certain amount of hours in the game. And as we've previously covered, the money is definitely not worth it. This version of Apex is developed by Tencent rather than Respawn, but does use their IP and characters. That being said, the mobile version, despite only being out for about two months, has two more exclusive legends and countless more features, including several permanent fun deathmatch modes, with the main game on console and PC really only having battle royale and arenas, with the occasional limited time mode showing up for the occasional event. We're still waiting for the return of solos, by the way. Speaking of LTMs, Control is a great 9v9 domination style mode that allows the player to have fun, not worry too much about the outcome, and just frag out. This limited time mode has been super popular across the entire Apex community, but was initially just in for a limited time so they could give it some tweaks and try it out. Control returned for this recent patch, but is now gone again, and we don't know when it comes back, or if there will be any changes made when it does. It almost feels like LTMs only serve to keep the crowd happy when there isn't anything else to do. We have already covered how matchmaking sucks, but there's another so-called feature of the matchmaking that really needs addressing, and that's when you don't get teammates. Players who perform exceptionally well might find themselves in sweaty lobbies with bad players, or if they are exceptionally unlucky, without any teammates at all. This involuntary no-fill seems to serve the purpose of keeping your win rate down, and is the worst feeling ever. Respawn does try to keep things fresh with the occasional patches, but many players are almost afraid of patch day at this point. There's been many instances of the game or servers going down for long periods of time on patch day. New patches mean new bugs, and we've had several instances of bugs that were gone for months or years make their way back with the game, with the most recent one coming to mind being this dropship bug, which is still going on, by the way. Console players can buy physical devices that they plug into their console to buy macros and even completely remove recoil from their weapons. These devices are called strike packs and it goes without saying are blatant cheating. They're supposedly extremely common on console and there so far hasn't been any attempt to deal with them. Honestly, I am unsure what can be done on respawn side, but it is still a huge problem that needs addressing. This one is a bit of a personal one, but it has to go. If you have several ordinances in your inventory, but only one of the variant that you are throwing, you would imagine that you would switch to your weapon once it's thrown, right? No, it instead switches to the next grenade on the wheel, whether you like it or not. I've even tried throwing grenades and then switching to another weapon only to have it bring up the grenade instead, getting me killed as I'm stuck mid-animation. At the very least, add an option to choose whether we wanted to rotate the grenades or switch back to the gun. Please respawn, I beg you. 
Another thing I've noticed that many players don't seem to mention is Horizon's ultimate. This nifty thing is annoying to deal with, but shouldn't be as impossible as it currently is. Horizon's newt has 200 health, but very often requires more than one full magazine of any gun to take down. This seems to be because of server issues or code issues, since many shots straight into the center of the ultimate flat out just no wrecks. This is more obvious when you're trying to break it with a single fire gun, like the wingman. Fortify is so annoying to deal with, and a 15% damage reduction along with the fortified enemy not being slowed by bullets means that they're incredibly hard to deal with as well. At Red Armor, Caustic has 258 effective health, and Gibraltar has over 300 effective health if you include his gun shield, making him the hardest legend to duel in the game. Now, personally, I feel like I deal a lot less than 85% of damage against these legends, but that could just be on my end or there's something with no regs. I, I don't know. It, I don't like it. Inconsistent movement drives any sane player up the wall and will get you killed. It's hard to know what exactly causes a dead slide, but it sometimes is your own fault if you try to run up and slide when taking damage, as the bullet stagger removes the velocity needed to pull off a slide jump. Sometimes you try to slide jump up too steep of an angle and you dead slide as well. Dead slides usually look like you're running and trying to crouch to slide, only to stop dead in your tracks and instead crouch, or you successfully hitting a slide, going for a jump, and just flat out losing all of your momentum to stand still on the ground very confused. I understand combating cheaters is difficult in this ever-evolving cat and mouse game, but his cheat or exploit has been returning in so many different ways that I can't help but be upset with respawn every time it happens. You'd imagine anyone who wants to cheat in predator lobbies would need to level up their account to level 10, then grind ranked until they finally rank up into platinum or diamond before getting to ruin their favorite streamers games. But that's wrong, because cheaters can just bypass this entire requirement and queue straight into predator lobbies when they are just low-level rookies. I'm not sure if they even have to get to level 10 or if they can just make a new account and instantly start ruining high rank lobbies. It's probably harder to fix than you'd think, but there will be way less cheaters ruining the game if they had to grind all the way to 15k RP before destroying Predator ranked. Care packages and replicators currently don't show on the minimap. I have no idea why, but it has confused me quite a few times. If you see a trail or hear a pack go down, don't assume it's a lifeline and just quickly open your map to see what you're dealing with. The game has this annoying tendency of trying to guess what you're trying to do. It is good and adds fluidity in some cases, since it does make the game feel a lot better if you approach a door and you can open it without having to look straight at it, but it sometimes becomes a problem when you have a down teammate right in front of said door, you look straight at your teammate, interact to go for the revive, but instead open the door. In some cases, you let the enemy team on the other side just instantly beam and kill you. This is especially bad for controller players, who have the same button bound for interacting as reloading, meaning you can go for a reload, but instead just start reviving your down teammate instead. This is a kind of subjective take, I guess, but I saw you guys in the comment section mention this a lot. Patches have been slowing down dramatically, and it feels like we see less new maps, fewer legend, and just less interesting limited time modes. When we get patches to the map, it comes in the form of a town takeover, or just one point of interest being remade, instead of major patches, like the destruction of King's Canyon back in the first few seasons of the game. Do you remember War Games? We were supposed to get five limited time modes, including cool modes such as Second Chance, Ultra Zones, Auto Banners, killing time and armor region, but we only ended up getting to play two of these modes with another making a return for the rest of the event, since every other mode was bugged and broken, and we still haven't seen anything of these modes since that 2021 event. And that should be everything that's wrong with Apex Legends right now, if I missed something let me know in the comments so we can keep this updated. Now I personally won't be partaking in the new Apex August, but if you are going to, feel free to let me know in the comments. I doubt it will be successful, but wish you luck nevertheless. Respawn or EA, if you are watching this, please Please don't copyright strike this video and instead please deal with these issues. Apex Legends has great potential and keeps us all coming back despite all of these issues. Please don't throw this golden hen away. Make sure to subscribe, check out the video on the screen and I'll see you all tomorrow.